Hello and welcome back to AP World History Modern. Today we're going to go through topic 5.9 or unit 5.9, Society in the Industrial Age. So our learning objective is to explain how industrialization caused change in existing social hierarchies and standard of living. Okay. Specifically here we're looking at, you know, middle class, rising middle class, women, impacts on women, pollution, poverty, crime, public health issues, etc., etc. Okay. So this is our, our, our last topic, uh, you know, dealing with, with specifically the Industrial Revolution. So what are we talking about in you know the you know the social classes that you know that uh, come to prominence during the Industrial Revolution? Um, so obviously our ruling class, right? Um, are they the same? Are they different? Or is this a continuity or is this a change? Um, you know, historically we're talking about a landed elite, um, you know, so a landed aristocracy or a landed gentry or nobility. Um, however, right, in you know during this era, um, you know, we're going to see a rise, a rise to prominence of, of business owners and. You know, what traditionally used to be the middle class, you know, the merchant class, uh, will eventually, you know, many of them, many of them will rise up, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and become wealthier and more influential than the traditional ruling class. So the middle class, right, so, you know, Ingalls will identify them as, you know, as the bourgeoisie. Um, you know, by, by 1913, British right, registrar specifications um, you know, between upper and working class, so professionals, managers, um, you know, individuals who control human capital, you know, financially dominate, you know, dominated by the upper ruling class, you know, but they, they emerge coming out of the Industrial Revolution. So individuals who have disposable income, so they may not be able to influence society, you know, control society or rule society, but they're able to not only to survive and live, but also to have, you know, a, a certain amount of disposable income as well um, you know as as we go through the 20th century much of the industrialized world you know we'll see a growing middle class uh, especially you know an explosion of middle class in the post-world war ii era you're starting to see you're starting to see a distinct class by the end of the by the end of the 19th century right and then of course our, our working class right so this group you know historically right would have been farm laborers peasants um, so now they're the proletariat, right? So people who sell their labor for wages, uh, historically they would have been bound to the land under industrial, you know, under laissez-faire capitalism. Um, you know, they're able to sell their sell their labor. Right? So there is some freedom of mobility that exists here. They don't own the means of production; they do physical labor, right? So <clears throat> this is the the industrial working class. All right, so going back to topic 5.1 here, um, you know, the, the rise of the middle class, you know, is going to also give rise to the cult of domesticity spreading down from the upper classes. So this is something that we typically associate with the Victorian era or it's originating in the Victorian era in England and then spreading around the industrialized world. Um, you know, something that is definitely true of the, you know, of the upper classes and something in which middle classes will try to emulate. All right, so... Um, but we've already kind of gone over the virtues associated with it and yeah, the realities of who and who could and who could not um, you know, try to live up to these standards um, of what it, what it meant to be a wife, right? the, the role of women in society. All right. Other things that we see going hand in hand with industrialization is, you know, suffrage, right? And and maybe, you know, when we talked about Marx and, and Das Kapital, we said one of the preconditions or, or one of the preconditions of capitalism is actually one of the things that will, you know, result in its overthrow, according to Marx, um, you know, is that, is that notion of social appropriation, right, that we associate with industrial capitalism. The fact that industrialization forces individuals to you know, live in the cities and then they force them to work together, that individuals being in close proximity to one another and the rise of the cities, um, you know, what role does that play in the suffrage movement, in the, organize, in the organizing of the suffrage movement, you know, and, you know, what ways do these ideas spread that are, that are helped by industrialization? Um, you know, and of course, the need for labor and women's role in the labor force <clears throat> as a result of industrialization, right? Women are in new roles in society. 
So, you know, we, uh, you know, this period isn't just a period of uh, economic transition, you know, it's a transformation. There's going to be just massive social, social transformations and social upheavals as well. One of which, of course, is, is, is women getting greater and greater autonomy um, in individual rights. All right. Hey, so this is the year that a country or city had more than one million people. Um, and you can kind of look historically, you know, what are some of the, you know, what are some of the earliest places to, you know, where, where uh, a population of, you know, of a million was hit? Um, you know, so looking here, Baghdad, right? Uh, you're going to see numerous cities in China during the Song era uh, reach this plateau. And then what you're going to see is once the Industrial Revolution hits, um, you're going to see a uh, you know a very very large increase in in population, um, not just in cities. It's not just urbanization per se, but it's just also just a general rise in population itself. Um, you know, as the world becomes more and more able to redistribute the you know, the resources that it has. Um, and we don't really often talk about food resources, but food resources is a major major thing that you know that, that we see moving around during this era um, especially once you start getting into the latter part of the 1800s and early 20th century um, you know once the railroad networks become fully developed and once the scene steamboats become commonplace um, you know you're going to see countries you know countries uh, becoming dependent on other countries for their food supply right so countries like the United States becomes a major supplier um, of things like grain for, for many countries of the world. Right. One of the other societal things that we see here is child labor, um, and this will come to the forefront uh, in the late 1800s. Um, you know, this is something that is identified very early on. We see it in things like the Reform Bills of 1832 in places like England. Um, but as industrial as the Industrial Revolution spreads, you know, so will child labor, and you know, as a as a thing. And then, of course, each individual country will start to target this as a yeah, something that needs to be reformed um, at their own pace. So, you know, child labor is a you know is one of these major things that we often kind of identify as you know uh, invoking reaction, right? Um, and it's also a continuity, right? Child labor, child labor has always existed. I mean, um, you know, having having spent a decent amount of my childhood on my grandparents' farm, um, I can. I can remember very well working at a very young age, um, you know, picking weeds, picking crops, picking potatoes, picking, you know, picking rocks. I don't know if I said that. I had so much fun. Um, billing hay, <laughs> you know, at a young age. Um, child labor is a continuity. It doesn't matter if you're agrarian or an urban society. And it will continue to be a continuity, you know, up, in, up into the modern era. Okay. All right. So this is, uh, I believe I took this image off from, or sorry. Oh, this image came from uh, mining of coltan. All right. All right. We also see, uh, you know, child labor in the textile industries. All right. And once again, um, this would be a continuity. So during the medieval period, one would expect to have seen child labor within the cottage industries, within the individual family homes in which textiles were made. As the industrial revolution expands and grows into factories, you're going to see children in the textile industries there. And then, of course, as the textile industry expands out into new countries um, that do not have child labor protections, you're also going to see child labor, um, you know, develop in there as well. All right, and of course, you know, uh, you know, one of the ways in which reaction took place to, uh, you know, to some of these. You know uh, examples of exploitation that we that we see during the industrial revolution is you're going to see a lot of cartoons um you know in in publications during this time you know just like today we see you know we see critics of major corporations you know in their policies using uh you know, using the you know, images to do the same but also uh, in addition to cartoons you're also going to start to see the use of photography um, and we've talked about photography as a means of social reform or economic reform. Um, when we, you know, when we looked at that video from, you know, what was going on with rubber in the Congo, um, and the power of the photograph um, in in order to to create change in society, um, social change especially, right? 
Uh, and of course, you know, during the industrial era, very few people uh, demonstrate this as much as Jacob Rees does, right? So he's a Danish American, right? And uh, and he goes in, and he himself lived in, you know, lived in. Uh, I believe he grew up in the Five Points region of New York City, and uh, you know, and then he becomes a photographer for a, for a newspaper, and you know, then he takes and you know and. Uh, and photographs these conditions, um, you know, as New York is exploding with immigrants, um, you know, and he eventually uh, these get published into a book. Uh, I believe it's called How the Other Half Lives. Oh, and actually, it's right there. Uh, How the Other Half Lives, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, you know, this is one of those things that is that is often credited with with uh, you know, um, resulting in the change of government in New York City, you know, and and the cleaning up of the city's sanitation departments and uh, increasing the housing regulations um, within the city itself, you know, and uh, so very powerful images, right, of what life was like, um, you know, in the 18, I think these are all taken in the 1880s and early 1890s, um, right, it's just what, what living conditions were actually like. So Mulberry Street, Little Italy, as it became known. Right, and uh, and I'm gonna try to remember to post this on my website. So this is filthy, filthy cities. Um, so it's a series, and they have a uh, um, you know they do a bunch of case study cities. And this is uh, the one I, I, I'm gonna try to provide a link to. Um, it's this one looks at in the Industrial Revolution in New York, um, and I kind of put some times on here because you are expected to understand some of the kind of medical and disease implications of urbanization and industrialization. Um, so between 22 minutes and 27 minutes in there, they're gonna talk about uh, uh, cholera. Um, and uh, if you don't know what cholera is, I guess I'll, I'll put this one up as well. Um, I have a friend from when I was a, a foreign exchange student um, who's, a, who's a doctor now uh, in Brazil. And I saw that she had posted this a few years back. Um, and I pulled this off from the CDC website. And it just kind of runs through the story of cholera, how it spreads, what it is. So I'll, I'll play just a second. This is the story of how cholera changed my village. Okay. So it'll, it, it is a little, um, you know, unsanitary in, in what's presented, but it's designed to, you know, to present what cholera is and how it spreads and how to prevent it for, uh, you know, a non-literate audience. Um, you know, consumable by anyone. So it's very simple. But, uh, but yes, cholera. Um, cholera is one of those things where um, I believe it was London where the first uh, tracking down or the ability to track down, um, you know, how it, you know, what the source of it was and how it spread, um, identifying where, where people were, were using toilets compared to where their drinking water was and then mapping up the city and identifying the, the problem spots uh, for the spread of cholera. cholera. Um, there's also a section on that video about typhoid and how typhoid spreads and typhoid nerd. There is a section there on Jacob Rees himself. Um, there's a bit on Thomas Edison and bringing in electricity. Um, so the kind of application of technology, you know, during the Industrial Revolution. And then after that, I think it talks about Henry Ford, um, you know, somewhere around like 42 or so minutes, 44 minutes in. All right, so that's that's in that city. If you that's in that, if you want to kind of get some additional information on that, if you don't know what those are, it's you know it's a it's a worthwhile few minutes. All right, all right and I'm definitely going to cut it short today, so that should give you time to kind of look at some of those. All right, uh, urban living. Right, what are we kind of seeing here? Growth of cities, cramped, dirty tenements. Tenements are you know these apartments that you know that are that people living in. At the beginning of this, they actually talk about tenements. Um, you know, and they kind of show you what living conditions were like inside these tenement apartments. Uh, multiple families jammed in, you know, sometimes with animals, uh, you know, pigs, <laughs> goats, and the such. Um, we're seeing very large changes in labor, you know, uh, women, children. Uh, we're seeing the growth of the middle class during this. Um, and of course, these, these new technologies in transportation and communication, right, are going to also help fundamentally change demographics. Um, you know, so it result in migration and population growth during this time. All right, so some key takeaways. New social classes will emerge, right? Um, you know, cult of domesticity is a thing. 
but something that is a you know so something that is very middle upper middle class and the upper class women um you know for the, for the bottom part of society you've seen a, a you know a more dramatic transition in responsibilities um and rapid urbanization is going to result in all kinds of challenges pollution poverty crime public health like cholera and you know and uh typhus and all that um you know and shortages and you know, tenements overcrowded tenements um you know and of course the video the video also goes into the into the infrastructural projects as well the sanitation infrastructural projects uh you know and how to bring in fresh water how fresh water was brought in from you know from the from the rural areas into the cities all right so you know I think that video is a really good place to look for like short-term and long-term effects associated with the Industrial Revolution. All right, so I'm going to post those uh, additional videos on my site. Feel free to watch those. Um, and that is all for today. Sapriani.